Welcome to this CUBE Conversation. My name is Dave Vellante and we're going to talk about data protection in the age of ransomware. It's a top of mind topic. And with me are two great guests and CUBE alums, David Noy, who's the Vice President of Product Management at Dell Technologies, and Rob Emsley, Director of Data Protection Product Marketing at Dell. Guys, welcome back to the CUBE. It's good to see you both. Oh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Sure yeah, thing. thanks a lot, Dave. Hey, uh, David, let me start with you. Maybe we could t look at the macro, the big picture at Dell for, for cybersecurity. What are you seeing out there? You know, I'm, I'm seeing an enormous amount of interest in uh, cybersecurity, obviously driven by a string of recent events, but, um, and, and a presidential executive order on, uh, around cybersecurity. Look, we're, we're in unprecedented times where, you know, disaster readiness is not just about um, being prepared for a wildfire or uh, a sprinkler going off in your data center. It's around a new class of malicious attacks that people just have to be ready for. And it's not even a question of uh, when it's, if it's going to happen, it's a question of when it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. You're going to get hit by them. And so we go beyond just thinking about, Hey, how do you build in technical capabilities into the product to make it difficult for attackers? We actually want to get predictive. We want to use uh, advanced technologies and capabilities like artificial intelligence and machine learning to go out and scan users' environments for, and look at their data, which is really the lifeblood of a business, and say, hey, we can see that there is potentially an attack looming. We can start to look for dormant attack vectors. And as soon as something bad is happening, because we know something bad is going to happen, we can help you quickly recover the restore or figure out which restore point to recover from. So you can get your business back and operational as soon as possible. Great, thank you for that, David. Hey, Rob, good, good to see you. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of changes recently, kind of as David was referencing. It used to be, okay, cybersecurity, that's the domain of the SecOps team. Uh, and, and, you know, the rest of the company said, okay, it's their problem. You know, data protection or backup, that was the backup admin. Those two worlds are kind of colliding together. We use terms like cyber resiliency now. It's a sort of superset of, if you will, of the traditional cybersecurity. So how can organizations get ahead of these cyber threats? When you engage with customers, do you have any sort of specific angles or tooling that you use to help? Yeah, Dave, uh, there's a couple of things to unpack there. You know, I think one of the things that you you call out is, is cyber resiliency. Uh, you know, I think there's a, um, there's a balancing act uh, that customers are, are working through between cybersecurity and cyber resiliency. On the, on the left-hand side of the balancing act, it's, you know, how can I keep uh, bad things out of my network? You know, the reality is, is that um, it's very difficult, you know, to do that. You know, there's many applications that customers have deployed um, to, to protect the perimeter. But as you know, many, many cyber threats, um, you know, are manifested from inside of the perimeter. So what we're seeing is, is customers starting to invest more in, in making themselves um, cyber resilient organizations. You know, and it is, as David mentioned, it's not the if, it's the when. The question is, how do you respond to when a cyber attack hits you? So one of the things that, that we introduced probably about six months ago is a, uh, a globally available cyber resiliency assessment. And we, we worked in collaboration with the Enterprise Strategy Group, and we put out a, a free online assessment tool to allow customers to, to really answer questions around, you know, a, a big part of the NIST framework um, around detection, um, uh, protection, and recovery. Um, and we, we give customers the opportunity to, to get themselves evaluated on, are they prepared? Um, are they vulnerable or are they just, you know, black and white exposed? You know, what we found over the last six months is that over 70% of the people that have taken this cyber resiliency assessment are fall into that category of they're vulnerable or they're exposed. Right, thank you for that. Yeah, the guys at ESG do a good job of that. They have deep expertise in, the, in that space. And, and David, Rob just talked about sort of the threats from inside the perimeter and, you know, any, Person, you don't even need a, a, a high school diploma to be a ransomwareist. You can go in the dark web, you can you know, acquire ransomware as a service. If you have access to a server, 
and are willing to put a stick in there or do some bad things or, or, or give credentials out, hopefully you'll end up in handcuffs. You know, but more often than not, people are getting away with really you know, insidious crimes. So how is Dell, David, helping customers respond to the threat of ransomware? So as, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the, the product approach is, is pretty sophisticated. You know, you're right, somebody can come and just put a USB stick into a machine, or if they have administrative pack, uh, access, they can use their, uh, figure out a code that they've either uh, been given because, you know, the trust has been placed in the wrong place, or they've somehow uh, socially engineered out of someone. Look, um, it's not enough to just say, I'm going to go lock down my system. Someone who's gained access can potentially gain access to other systems by hopping through them. We take a more of a, a vault-based approach, which means that when you create a cyber vault, it's essentially locked down from the rest of your environment. Your cyber criminal is, in, is not able to get to that solution because it's been air gapped. It's kept somewhere else completely separate of the network, but it also has keys. And to the keys to the kingdom are that it opens up only at a certain time of day, so it's not vulnerable to coming in at any time. It goes and requests data, it pulls the data, and then it keeps that immutable copy in the vault itself. So the vault is essentially like a gated off, moated off environment that an attacker cannot get into. Uh, if you find that there was an attack, or if an attack has occurred, which an attack will occur so sooner or later, you can then basically prevent that attacker from getting access into that vaulted environment uh, before that next opening event occurs. Um, we also have to go back and look at time because sometimes these attackers don't you know, instantiate all at once, I'm gonna basically go and encrypt all your data. They take a, a more of a graduated approach. And so you have to go and look at patterns, access patterns of how data has actually changed and not just look at the metadata, say, okay, well, it looks like the data changed at a certain time. You have to look at the data contents. You have to look at the, if there's a file type, oftentimes you can actually analyze that as well and say, hey, th this given file, whether it's a PowerPoint file or an Excel file or one of a hundred or thousand different file types should look like this. It doesn't look like that inside. What many of the uh, solutions that look for these attack vectors do is they're just looking at metadata access and then potentially just entropy. So how fast things are changing. Oh, it's changing more fast than, or faster than it normally would. That's not enough. Uh, the attackers are just getting to get smarter about how they go and change things. They're going to change it so that they don't change file suffixes or they don't change them with a you know very high entropy rate. And it, without using some kind of a, a, a system that's actually constantly tuning itself to say, hey, this is how these attack vectors are evolving over time, you're going to miss out on these opportunities to go and protect yourself. So we have also a constantly evolving and learning capability to go and say, okay, as we see how these attack vectors are evolving to adapt to the way that we defend against them, we're going to also update our practices to make sure that we account for the new models. So it's just, it's, it's a very adaptable um, kind of, uh, it really is an artificial intelligence form of uh, protecting yourself. Can I ask you a question, David, just to follow up on the immutable <laughs> copy? Where, where does that live? Is it can it live on prem? Is it in the cloud? Either where, where uh, both. It? So, so we have uh, um, the ability to put that on prem. We have the ability to put that in a second data center. We have the ability to keep that actually in a colo site. So basically, completely out of your data center. And we have the ability to keep that in the cloud as well. Well, the reason I ask is because I, I, I just, you know, putting my paranoid SecOps hat on, and I'm no expert here, but. Yeah. But I've talked to organizations that say, oh yeah, it's in the cloud, it's a service. I say, okay, and it, but it's immutable. Yeah, it's write once, read many. You can't, you can't erase it. I go, okay, can I turn it off? Well, no, not really. Well, what if I stop paying for the service? Well, we'd send a notice out. I said, I say, well, okay, wait a minute. So is, is, am I just being too paranoid here? Um, how, how do you handle that, that objection? Uh, of turning it off? Yeah, can I turn it off or can you can you make it so that nobody can turn it off? Oh yeah, that's a good question. So actually what we're building into the product roadmap is the ability for that uh, product to actually self-inspect it and to look at whether or not even the underlying, uh, so for example, if, if the, the, the service is running in a virtual machine, well, the attacker could say, let me just go attack that virtual machine and infect it and basically turn itself off, even in an on-prem, never mind in the cloud. And so we're looking at building or we're building into the roadmap a lot more self-inspection capabilities to make sure that somebody isn't going to just shut down the service. 
Um, and, and so that is actually that kind of self resiliency is is critical, even to a vaulted solution, which is air gapped right to your point, you don't want someone going well, I can just get around your, your solution, I'm just going to go shut it down. Um, that's yeah. something that we can protect against. So this, so this perfect. talks, I think for the audience, this talks to the, it's, it's like an ongoing game of escalation and you want to have a partner who has the resources to keep up with the bad guys. Cause it's just, it's just a constantly, you know, upping, upping the ante. Um, Rob, you guys do a survey every year, the global data protection index. Um, tell us about that. What, what are the latest results? You, you survey a lot of people. I'm interested in, you know, the context of things like remote work and hybrid work. It's escalated the threat. What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, the Global Data Protection Index, we, we survey over a thousand um, IT executives, you know, around the globe. And, and in the most recent study, uh, we, we absolutely started to ask questions specifically around, you know, customers' concerns with regards to cybersecurity. And we found that over 60% of the customers surveyed, you know, really are concerned that they don't feel that they are adequately prepared to respond to cyber threats that they, you know, see, um, unfortunately, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, certainly, you know, as you mentioned, the, the work from anywhere, learn from anywhere reality that, that many customers are dealing with you know, one of the concerns that they have is the, the increased uh, attack surface that they now have to deal with. I mean, the perimeter of their network is now, you know, much broader, you know, than it, than it ever has been in the past. You know, so I think all of this leads, Dave, to um, cyber security discussions and cyber resiliency discussions being um, top of mind for really any, um, CIO, um, their CISO in, in any industry, you, you know, in the days of, of old, you know, we used to focus at the financial services industry, you know, as, you know, um, a bunch of customers that we, you know, could have very relevant conversations with, but now, you know, that is now cross industry wide. Um, there isn't a vertical that isn't, um, concerned about the threats of cybersecurity and, uh, and cyber attacks. So, you know, when we think about our business, um, especially around data vaulting with our Parabatech portfolio, uh, but also with our, uh, our power scale portfolio, with our unstructured uh, data storage solutions, you know, we were really having um, constant conversations around how do you make your environment more cyber resilient. And, you know, we've been seeing, you know, rapid growth in, in, in both of those solution areas, uh, both uh, implementing extensions of customers, uh, backup and recovery um, solutions, you know, but also, um, you know, in the environments where, uh, you know, we're deploying, you know, large scale uh, unstructured storage um, infrastructure, you know, the ability to, to have real-time monitoring of those environments and also uh, to extend that to delivering uh, a, a vaulted solution for your unstructured storage are all things that are leading us to, um, uh, you know, work with customers to actually help them become more cyber resilient. Great, thanks. The last question, and, and maybe for both of you, uh, maybe Rob, you start and, and David, you could chime in. I'm interested in what's exciting you guys, what's new in the portfolio, are there new features that you're, you're delivering that map to the current market conditions? I mean, your, your, your unique value proposition and your capabilities have, have shifted. You have to respond to the market changes over the last, last 18 to 24 months, whether it's cyber, ransomware, the digital transformation. What's new in the portfolio and what, what's exciting you guys? So, so Dave, yeah, so quite recently we, um, you know, as well as, uh, you know, running an event specifically to talk about protection in the age of ransomware and to discuss many of the things that we've, that we've covered on this call, um, you know, data protection is still a foundational technology to help customers become, um, you know, more secure um, and, you know, reduce, reduce their risk profiles. So, um, you know, innovation that we delivered very recently, you know, is really in three specific areas, you know, VMware data protection, uh, NAS um, data protection, and then, you know, also, you know, we introduced a tech preview 
of a direction that we're taking to expand uh, the uh, scalability and manageability of our power protect appliances. So transparent snapshots delivers capabilities to help customers better protect their VMware environment without the concern of disrupting their production applications when they're doing backup and recovery of virtual machines. Uh, uh, dynamic NAS protection uh, moves away from the, the age-old mechanism of NDMP uh, and provides a much more performant and scalable solution for protecting all of that unstructured data running on uh, NAS infrastructure. And then last but not least to say the tech preview of smart scale, which is our uh, new solution and architecture to allow customers to pull together multiple power protect appliances within their data centers and give them a much easier way of managing the power protect appliances that they have and scaling their environment by implementing a federated namespace to allow them to get support in that environment. Nice, uh, some great innovations there. All right, David, David, bring us home. What, what's exciting you? You shared a little bit with the roadmap. Uh, yeah, this... look, I think all of this is about uh, operations today. Every enterprise is 24 by seven. It doesn't matter what vertical you're in, right? Downtime is unacceptable. And whether that means whether it's downtime because you got hit by a malicious attacker, it means downtime because you were, uh, or caused by disruption of virtual machine instances to Rob's point uh, during a backup process and we can't interrupt those processes. We can't impact their performance. Uh, it means, you know, making sure that your largest unstructured repositories and NAS uh, deployments can be backed up in a, in a time that makes sense so that you can meet your own SLAs. And it means that uh, with the smart scale product, our ability to go and say, okay, as you're expanding your backup target environment, we can do that in a seamless fashion without disrupting your backup operations and your day-to-day -day operations. All of this is around making sure that we minimize the amount of disruption that our end users experience either because of malicious attacks or because of day-to-day -day operations and making, you know, the, making sure that those businesses really can operate 24 by seven. And that, that is the crux of, of a really true enterprise solution for data protection. Guys, a very important topic. I really appreciate you, you coming on theCUBE. Great conversation and, uh, and keep up the good work of, of, uh, of protecting our data. Will do, thanks. Thanks, Dave. All right, and thanks everybody for watching this CUBE conversation. This is Dave Vellante, and we'll see you next time.